Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So first things first, thank you so much everyone for helping me hit 7,000 subscribers. I'm honoured and to be honest it just feels absolutely huge. The channels that inspired me to start my channel had about 7,000 subscribers at the time so it just feels absolutely incredible to kind of be up there at that level of subscribers too. It's definitely not something I take for granted but anyway, we have had a new faction focus article on the Warhammer community, this time focusing on the Stormcast Eternals. It's light on details in terms of the tactics you can use for Stormcast Eternals, which is a bit of a strange article to be honest, but it does give us a little bit of new information about the Sacrosanct Chamber, so let's dig right in and see what we can find out. It gives us a very generic blurb about the Stormcast Eternals, just as we got with the uh, Night Haunts one, and it looks like this is something that they're going to do for all of the factions in Age of Sigmar, just kind of give a introduction to all of them, how they play and who they're suitable for, for absolute beginners, and to be honest that makes quite good sense. All it really says is that when some warriors die, if they're particularly noble and just, they get sent to Sigmar to serve as his Stormcast Eternals. Their key features, apart from the fact some of them have been reforged from the dead, is obviously the fact that they're covered in their plate armour, the Sigmarite armour, and the fact that they can of course call upon the power of the lightning. It does actually pick out another one which uh, is a bit unusual, detecting lies and negating dark magics is obviously pretty useful. Basically what they say here is they're the perfect army for a beginner with Age of Sigmar and obviously they're pretty easy to paint, they're easy to build and they're very forgiving and effective for new players but the thing I do like about Stormcast is they are rewarding to master and it's a little bit like Space Marines and I know people don't want me to be drawing that comparison but Space Marines are another army where it's very easy to pick up and play as a beginner but there's a wealth of depth and strategy strategy to mastering the army and you can definitely tailor the Stormcast to your own personal preferences. I know there's a lot of people who are disappointed that there's another Stormcast chamber, but at the same time, like the more they do add, and hopefully this will be the last one for a while, but the more they do add, the more diversity the army has and the more strategies you can bring into play, which means that really you will see a lot of different themed Stormcast armies. It's definitely cool for everyone to have their own kind of thematic army that's separate from everyone else and it's just personalized. But anyway, let's get on to the good stuff, the new models. The Sequitors, as I rightly called them in the last video, is the official name of the bog standard units, which are basically the Sacrosanct Chambers versions of Liberators. And it says here, new bit of information, they are specialised in fighting magical foes like demons and night haunts. And already that is such a cool theme for a Stormcast Chamber. And again, it's building up this idea of having them in a starter set against the night haunts, which is particularly cool. The really cool thing about this unit from a narrative point of view is the fact that all of them were mages or priests or some kind of mystic in their past life and as such they all have magical abilities too which means as Stormcast they can actually imbue their weapons with some kind of arcane power or energy. So I'm very interested to see how that's going to play out on the board. Next we finally find out what the actual wizards are called and these are the evocators and these are basically your standard warriors mages. The interesting thing I thought is the fact they said they were a mix of Stormcast Eternal Paladins and Battle Wizards of the Collagiate Arcane. Looking at those models, to be honest I've never really looked at this kit but they actually look really awesome, especially in this picture here where they're all nicely painted up and on the scenery but they're also a mix of Paladins. I don't really see the mix very well. This plus this somehow equals this. I kind of get it and at the same time I kind of don't. Like this guy here, I think his pose is just awkward. Something about it just doesn't look quite right to me and maybe again they'll grow on me in time but at the moment I'm not that fast and I don't really think they look that great. But at the same time the concept is cool and I do like the fact that they finally brought wizards to the Stormcasts. But yeah, they're armed with a sword, a stave and they can enhance the abilities of other sacrosanct Stormcasts with powerful spells apparently. So again, I guess we'll wait and see how that plays out. Next we have the Castigators and these are more interesting to me. A lot of people are predicting they might be part of the starter set due to their kind of static poses but they are indeed like a mortar launcher unit because they have these crystalline bombs which are charged with Dracoff Breath. So that's pretty cool and they can charge them up with lightning as well just like the Sequitors can. 
so another cool unit there. Next we see that this is going to be called the Celestar Ballista, the first ever Stormcast Eternals War Machine and this is one of my favourite things from the announcement because obviously the chamber is going to be made up of both mages and engineers so we finally got a use for that Lord Ordinata. I do particularly love it, I love the uh, multiple barrels and I think the crew actually look brilliant too. I'm really hoping there's going to be a bit more posability options and customization in the box because if you want to buy several of these and they're in the exact same pose that would be a bit disappointing but one thing I do like is I think they've absolutely nailed this guy's face if you've been following my channel for a while now you'll know I'm not a massive fan of uh, characters without their helmets in the Stormcast army but I think this guy actually looks really cool finally we hear about the Lord Arcanum and these are basically the commanders of the army and the more interesting thing about their law is the fact that they've overseen the Anvil of Apotheosis. There's actually a great short story on the Anvil of Apotheosis on the Malign Portents website and that was a really great read. But for those of you who don't know, the Anvil is basically where the Stormcast Eternals are forged in the first place and reforged once they die and they're sent back to Azir. And basically there are these six Master Smiths which were gifted to Sigmar by Grungni, the Dwardin God, and they're basically the ones that carry out this forging process and if you read this story you find out that it can actually go horribly wrong at times but yeah it's these guys who are overseeing that process and making sure that if anything unnatural comes out of the forging process it can be swiftly dealt with. In terms of how they play on the board, it says that they can heal fellow warriors and return them to battle instantaneously. And yeah, to be honest, as I said in the last video, I wasn't really sure about how it looked, but it's definitely growing on me. I think every time I look at it, I like it just a little bit more. But that's pretty much all we find out, apart from having a second new war scroll to look at. And this one is the Knight in Cantor. So we finally know that this is definitely a standalone unit and it's nothing to do with the Secretors. But yeah, it's definitely an interesting war scroll. Her damage output is sort of decent, nothing too spectacular. I'm not quite sure how they determine which Stormcast have 3 plus saves and 4 plus saves, but whatever, she has a 3 plus save. I think for consistency's sake, it would be better to be a 4 plus, but never mind. But she has two once per battle abilities, and the first one is a scroll, which is quite straightforward. She can once per battle auto unbind a spell. That's absolutely fantastic. It's a very powerful ability and it's certainly going to be potentially game changing. I think there is definitely a lot of opportunities to bring some really interesting strategy to the game with that scroll. But the next one is also interesting. She has these spirit flasks attached to her waist and you'll notice that a lot of the uh, figures in this army also have that. Even on the sequitors you'll see some of these flasks attached to their waists. But what these do on her is quite interesting. If we go back to this image of her from the last video, she's holding one and then she's got two on her belt. But what you can do is you can choose whether you want to shatter one, two or three of them. And remember, this is just once per battle. Any unit, whether friend or foe, within three inches will suffer a mortal wound unless they have 10 or more models and then they will suffer D3 mortal wounds instead. And that's for every flask shattered. So that means you will do three D3 mortal wounds on a unit within three inches with 10 or more models if you shatter all three. It's almost a bit of a suicide attack, however, because it can actually hurt herself. In fact, it does hurt herself, but you allocate the wounds to her last. I've set up a quick little scenario just so you can understand exactly how this spell works. And although the scenario here is completely unrealistic, because I'm not quite sure how she's going to find herself surrounded by five units of Night Haunts, but you never know. What I've done is I've put her in the middle. There's three Battle Line Night Haunt units and a Knight of Shrouds that are in range, which is this circle here. So that represents three inches away from her. If she shatters one of the flasks, because each of the three battle line units has 10 or more models in them, they're going to take D3 wounds each. And of course, that's mortal wounds as well, so you can't save them. Assuming, obviously, that they're going to be one wound models, that means that on average, you're going to lose two models per each of those units. 
and that's just from one flask so that's pretty cool then obviously because the knight of shrouds is only a single model unit he will take a wound and she will also take a wound at the end the other little character is out of range so he's completely fine but if you cracked all three of them you're then going to be doing 3d3 mortal wounds to the three units the knight of shrouds will take three and then finally she will take three so it's actually almost a very good strategy when she only has one wound left to smash all three of those flasks and do massive amounts of damage you're then looking at about six mortal wounds on average for each of those units with over 10 models the knight of shrouds will then take three mortal wounds and so will she that means at a maximum you could do nine mortal wounds to each of those three units leaving them each with one model left but yeah it's a pretty cool ability and i really like it finally she's got her own unique spell and it's basically just an interesting take on the arcane bolt it's got a casting value of seven you do a mortal wound to every unit within 18 inches but it also means that it hinders them at running and charging as well until the next hero phase so it's almost like doing a small amount of damage over a large area rather than doing a slightly larger amount of damage over a concentrated area or target with the arcane bolt but yeah, that's basically our little look at the new models and I'm going to leave the video there because I don't want to ramble on for too long, but hopefully you found this interesting in some way. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget as well to hit that little bell button so you know when my videos are released. Drop me a comment down below so we can uh, discuss all things related to Age of Sigmar and otherwise I will see you all really soon.